welcome, or welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know, and what you will know if you've looked at the thumbnail, read the title, or the description, but I'm going to say, tell you anyway in this intro, is that this is a pride-based collab, collabed, collab, oh the pain is real today folks, I'm so sorry. This is a pride-based collab with my two fellow bitches of Eastwick, Anya and Nona. And we decided in our bitchy conversations that we have that it would be really nice to finish off Pride Month where we choose our three favourite shades from the rainbow and create a look with them using matte shadows on one eye and shimmer shadows on the other. So, the question is, what colours have the girls chosen? Which palettes did I choose? And more importantly, are you going to watch all three films? I really hope so. Right. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Get comfy. And enjoy. Hey! Welcome back from the intro. Right. You will have seen from the intro, the title, and the description what this film is about. But let me give you a few more details. Um, the Bitches of Eastwick, i.e. myself, Anya and Nona, have come up with our own way to celebrate the end of Pride Month. So we've each chosen our three favourite shades from the rainbow. Now you all know mine are going to be blue, green, purple. It goes without saying, doesn't it really? It's got to be done. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to do one eye in matte, all matte, and one eye all shimmer as our way to celebrate the end of Pride Month. So, I've got a number of different items here. I'm going to dip into my two neon Oh My Glitter pigments in the green and the purple. And I'm going to dip into uh, Submerge from Thirsty from Jeffrey because I think that is the brightest blue matte that I've got. And then for the shimmers, I'm going to go into uh, Zulu for the green shimmer in the middle there because I absolutely love that green shimmer. And then I'm going to grab Slush for Blue Lagoon and a Berry a Blast for the blue and the purple. Uh, discount that I've got at September Rose. Bomber in all caps saves you 10% on all orders over £10 and it is now affiliated so I now actually get a little bit of commission if you use it. Right, this is a teaching channel and that element combined with high pain means that I very often have to stop what I'm doing and um, just kind of talk to you for a minute before I can go back into blending. Now if that's going too slow for you, feel free to speed me up, I won't be offended, okay? Right, let's get you zoomed in. I don't go as deep into teaching mode when I'm doing these sort of collabs, um, but I do sometimes, I add certain elements in. Uh, for example, I'm going to explain to you about how to work out whether you have hooded eyes or deep set eyes like I have. And my bloody tripod is not holding the camera I want it to. There we go. Right, now, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, 
you can see all of my eyeball lid so it's not hooded admittedly you can't see much of it but you can see it it's only if your upper lid completely covers this right the way down to your lash line either part or all of the lid that you have either a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an asian eye i'll show you what i mean now about deep set eyes or they're sometimes called double eyelids um which is what i've got and I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. Um, when I cut my crease, I can't just follow the shape of my natural eye socket. And even when I use glitter glues, I always end up with a complete patch with no glitter on it after a few hours. So, if I show you what I mean, if I cover my mobile eyelid and then close that eye, you can see I've got as much space again that folds back in out of sight and if I cover the upper lid and do the same thing I've got almost as much space again there that folds back in hence why all of my tutorials are hooded lid friendly now if you do have hooded lids you need to create yourself the illusion of a mobile lid so grab yourself a brush something like this or a pencil brush and just sketch out where you need your crease to be usually sort of three or four mils something you know, about a brush width basically from what effectively were your lash line which will give you about the same amount of, lash, of lid space that I have this will reduce the space between your crease and your brow but just use slightly smaller brushes than I do okay now that's that bit out of the way Time to start playing with some pigments. Now, um, these are my glitter neon pigments. There's a number of ways you can use them. You can um, put them into a little mixing tray and add either water or a mixing medium or setting spray. Or you can just wet your brush and dip into the loose pigment which I think today is what I'm going to do. Just trying to choose the right sized brush for my requirements. Okay, I'm going to grab this one from Boozy Shop. This is their tapered blending brush. It is clean. It's just slightly stained. It's, it, it needs its deep clean, basically. Right. Uh, today I'm going to be using my iHeart Revolution Fixing Spray in... Vanilla and coconut, because even though when I'm recording this, it's the last couple of weeks of June. Last night we had an amazing thunderstorm and it's still raining out there today. So, I'm going to have vanilla and coconut and pretend I'm sitting somewhere exotic with a cocktail. Right. I think I'll go into the purple neon first. I love these Oh My Glitter pigments. Um, I do have a discount code with them as well. Actually, that one's also affiliated. Um, again, you save 10% on orders over £10. All of, my description, all of my discount codes are listed in the description box. But I'm going to thoroughly soak this brush and then dry the ferrule off. That's really important so you don't get any moisture going down, loosening the glue, holding these bristles in place. And then I'm literally just going to put it into the pigment, pick it up and just tap off a little bit back into the pot. Right, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed and I have used my usual antiperspirant primer, details of which again are in the description box. And on my lid is Mac Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I've not set, but I've been waffling to you for quite a while now. So it's not sticky anymore, it's dried down. See how stunning that depth of colour is, and I only dipped in the once. So again, dipped in once again, tapped off. I'm going to do the same inside. Hmm, I think I needed to re-wet my brow. Oh no. 
So, Anya, Nona and myself decided we wanted to do a joint Pride um, film. We've all done looks this month that are either Pride inspired or are bright enough and colourful enough to wear to a Pride event. But we decided that our little friendship group wanted to do something specifically, the three of us. We decided to call it our section of the rainbow. Oh, what am I doing? I'm meant to be... I'm meant to be doing um, shimmer this side, aren't I? I am such an... I'm so used to just... Doing the same thing both sides. I'm a numpty. I'm an absolute numpty. Right, I'm just clean, cleaning this brush off on a washcloth. And I'm just going <clears> to <throat> reapply some Mac Soft Ochre to the other lid. So this proves that I really shouldn't talk and try and do something new at the same time. Because as anyone with arthritis will tell you, well anyone with arthritis and fibro will tell you, that any change in weather from it being a beautifully sunny day on Monday to being absolutely pelting it down Tuesday and Today, which is Wednesday, really exacerbates uh, my pain levels. So, and unfortunately, when my pain levels go up, my fibro fog is real. I mean, seriously, I walked into the bathroom carrying my mug this morning thinking, why did I bring this out here? I wanted to do myself a drink and I decided to take my mug to the bathroom. I genuinely have no idea what was going through my mind at the time. I'm not sure, to be quite honest, that anything was going through my mind at the time. Right, I'm now going to go into this gorgeous green. Look at this. <gasps> love these. I love, love, love these pigments. Um, I'm hoping that I did get a lipstick named after me long, long before I had my um, discount code. Oh, a loose bit there. There you go. Um, called Bomalicious. It was a beautiful purple oh, with um, like silver shimmer in it. It was a liquid lipstick and I loved it. But unfortunately, it's out of stock at the moment. And to be honest, at the moment, I'm tending to wear more bullet lipsticks than I am liquid lipsticks. I'm only really wearing liquid lipsticks now if I'm going out of an evening and I don't want to have to fuss with worrying about my lipstick. And you can see what I'm doing now is just gently buffing where the two colours meet just to blend the two together. a little bit more of that green just really pack it on look at that isn't that stunning oof beautiful right to close the green up Ange before you knock it everywhere um yeah so I'm hoping I have spoken to Robin and um, she's she had a car accident recently, so she's sort of had to take a bit of time off, and she's playing catch up. Um, she's okay, basically another car driving to the back of them, and they were on their way home. I've cleaned all the pigment off of the brush, and now I'm just dry brushing, just to soften the edges, just that little bit more. You can see it's made a really interesting sort of 
as Nikki Raven would call it, pukey green on my lid. I'm going to go with my Morphe M562. I'm going to grab my slush palette. And I'm going to pick up a combination of blue Curacao and black heart. Blue Crusader is a matte, but it has got a little bit of sparkle in it, but by the time you blend it out, you don't really see the sparkle. So I feel okay using it on my matte eyelid. I just want to deepen the crease up. And as I'm using purples and blues, why not? Yeah, so she's going to have a look for me and see whether the pigments that she used for the liquid lipstick are going to be um, stable enough or would work with a bullet lipstick. So I'm really hoping that soon I'm going to have a bombalicious bullet lipstick that I can use. And I'm probably going to have to buy about five of them because I'm liking bullet lipsticks at the moment. Now the reason that I always do this through my crease is more for those of you who've had to create a crease because anything dark goes backwards and anything bright comes forward so if you've had to create a crease this will help you with the illusion that um, you do actually have a crease rather than the fact that you've actually created one uh, this Morphe M562 is such a good little brush again I saw Nicky Raven using it um, and I've been struggling to find one that was small enough to use because obviously with my hooded lids and oh, not hooded my deep set eyes where I have the same issues with hooded lids um, it sometimes it's difficult to get a brush finer enough to do the kind of shading that you want without going everywhere if you know what I mean by that right time to come into thirsty and I'm going to grab, this is one of the Ranimore Animal brushes, one of the e, um, AliExpress brushes that I recommend in my brush film. And this is the Medium Shader Brush 2, basically it's just a flat brush. A lot of companies call this a um, concealer brush actually. I'm going to pick up some Submerge from the Thirsty Palette. Got to be honest, this is probably my least favourite of all of his palettes. It's one that I use the least. And I'm going to wet the matte. Just so it has the same level of pow as my neons. Because I don't have a neon blue. But I want to be able to have the blue still show. Oh yes, that's pretty. Have the blue still show up so what I do is I put it on slightly damp first and then dry the brush off because never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush and then I'm going to go across pick up some more pigment dry this time and just sort of build it up on top of the damp pigment that I'd already put down. Yes, I'm getting a lot of fallout from this. That's because I'm not tapping my brush off at all, but that's also why I don't do my base first. Do you know what? I am so blessed to have Anya and Nona as friends in my life. It's just, even though they're on the opposite side of the Atlantic to me, I do consider them very, very close friends. Um, we chat pretty much daily um, on Insta or through Facebook. Um, we all laugh at the same things. We all enjoy the same stuff, you know. It's just, it's so nice. That's, that's one, of the, one of the real benefits for me that have come out of... Um, having this YouTube channel 
which is the friendships that I've made. Uh, you know, I've, I've got friendships with people all around the world. I've got Swedish friends, I've got American friends, I've got um, Dutch friends, I've got New Zealand friends, I've got Canadian friends, um, I've got Puerto Rican friends that actually live in America now, so I guess they still count as American, but their heritage is Puerto Rican. And I've got some northern friends from the UK that I would probably never have met were it not for my channel. Um, and it's for someone who is very much tied to the house, unless I'm, you know, popping in the car to go and see a friend or to go and see my mother in law. Um, I really don't get out a lot because, to be quite honest, I'm scared of going out on my own now because I know that if I do end up collapsing with my pain, there's nobody there to help, you know. Um, I worry about getting jostled by people when I'm walking around. It's just... It's amazing the things that you don't ever think you're going to have to worry about and then you get chronic illness and all of a sudden it's all you can think about. Shame. But as I said, it's it's lovely that I've got such good friends. Right. I'm going to go back in with the uh, Boozy Shop brush which I have made sure is absolutely dry because I've been a bit of a skank and wiped it on my pyjama trousers. Because where I get so much fallout from all of my um, powders, things, especially like Cotier Spun, just, you know, that, that stuff is so finely milled, it gets everywhere. But I love the finish it gives. Um... I always, I've got about six of these tops that I wear and you never get to see them but I have a variety of different PJ bottoms that I wear, sometimes short, sometimes long ones, um, but basically I just rotate round. I quite like having the same top in, in, in the majority of my tutorials though because then it doesn't detract from the actual tutorial itself, in case you were wondering, you probably won't. Right, so I'm going into, this is, I think this is the only Zulu palette where the colours don't have names. So I'm going into the shimmer green in the middle and I'm absolutely packing this brush as you can see. Ah, see, that's a pretty good match isn't it? That's not bad. Now I'm expecting hella fallout. Because I'm not actually wetting the brush initially because I need to be able to blend it and if it's wet it'll pack on rather than blending so I'm just kind of just smudging it into my skin at the moment obviously you saw that I put Coachy Air Spun on and, uh, Coachy Air Spun, because I'm just talking about it you saw that I put MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot on here Okay, so now I've got the depth of colour down that I wanted. Shall I try wetting it? Yeah, let's see how it goes. So I'm going to pack the brush up again. Absolutely pack it out both sides. And... Wet brush. Just got a mouthful of setting spray, that was lovely. And now I'm just going to... sort of press this on top. Kind of the reverse of what I did over here where I started with the wet and then went to the dry. I started with the dry this time to set the base and now I'm going in with the wet. Yeah, that's about the right sh shape and size, isn't it? I keep sitting back and checking because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical. So just sit back and make sure the shapes look about the same when you look at the, your eyes in the mirror. Again, I'm cleaning my brush off on a washcloth. If you're using a colour switch, 
make sure as well as cleaning it off you're also drying the brush because you do not want to go into a pressed pigment with even a slightly damp brush okay this is what I hate about white bristles they stain like a mofo right time to open slush and I'm going to go into a berry blast and pack the brush both sides with that not quite the same shade as the neon but never mind it's still a shimmery purple yeah trust me to choose what are the most difficult colors to create what do I always say blue green purple so which three colors do I decide to use today blue green purple couldn't make my life easier by using yellow orange and red could I no of course not but fortunately, I have the palettes, and that will do the job. So, going in with the, initially the dry shade, like I did before. Clean the brush, because I've now got green on it as well. This is such fun. I love playing with makeup. I hope that comes over when I'm doing my tutorials. Makeup should be fun. Yeah. Do what makes you happy. If other people don't like it but you do, fine. Alright, you might have to tone it down a little bit for work, maybe. Depending on where you work and what their restrictions are. I'm just using the very, very tip of the bristles to blend these two. Because I don't want to knock any of the... So the risk with um, shimmers is if you buff them too much, you'll buff all the shimmer out. And you'll end up with um, just dark. without any. You'll just end up with a matte shade, basically, without any shimmer left. I need a dark shimmer to go through my crease, don't I? Mm. Right over here. Nope, all the dark ones in Mini Magic. I'm back. That one's a satin. What shade is that? That's a green. Yeah, I could use that one. Okay, this is just. This is Juvia's Mini Magic. I'm going to go into Aja, A-J-A, which is a green satin. It is a satin, I promise you. You saw it on my finger, it's a satin. I'm going to go in with that Morphe M562 brush again. Problem is, a satin against these shimmers is probably going to look matte. Yeah, it does. I promise you it's a satin. It really is. I'll go over it in a minute with them. Um, another shimmer if I can find one that will work. So again, just through the crease. Tiny little circles just to soften the edges of the line. Just so that when you open your eye just looks like depth of shadow where your eyes gone backwards. Your eyes gone backwards. You know what I mean. Um, 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 um. What have I got in this one? Got um, the BH Weekend Festival palette. Which I've got to be honest, I haven't even used yet. It's got Wicked and Trance, which are both, again, they're satins, so I could possibly get away with that, couldn't I? Let's do a mixture of those two. And pop that over the top. Yeah, 
that that's keeping it sat in more, isn't it? I have to check here because I've got super, super deep creases. Um, because my eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. And they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly out of it. I went totally blind in it when I was 13. Well, I say totally blind. I can tell the difference between light and dark. So if you shine a light in my eye, I can tell you you're shining a light in my eye. But I couldn't tell you anything else, basically. Not even colours. My eye basically sees just light and dark. brush off and then one of my favourite shades from Slush I love using Blue Lagoon it is just delightful I went super British then didn't I delightful I'm just clearing that up because I know if I don't when I'm editing it, it's going to annoy the frig out of me. Okay. So, back into slush. I didn't do a very good job of tidying that out, did I? Honestly. Look, like I've been punched in the eye by a boxer. Right, now I'm going to go into Blue Lagoon. Again, because it's a pressed pigment, I'm going to start off with it dry. And then I'll go over it wet. Even brighter than that blue from Jeffrey's. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? I mean, just come on. There is a fly just lazily buzzing around my light fitting. So if you suddenly see me do some sort of karate kid chopping moves. It's because the little buggers come too close, alright? Right. Again, pack the colour onto the brush. Wet the brush. And. Oh, look at that! Right, okay, enough growling at you for a moment. Uh, I'm going to pause you while I go and put foundation and whatnot on, and I will be back. So uh, it's going to take me a couple of minutes, but for you, it's going to be instant. Hello, I am back. As you can see, I decided to go for blue brows today to pull out the lid shade because basically I got a new blue blue brow pomade. That's difficult to say. And I just wanted to have a play with it really. That simple. Right, I'm gonna go into the slush palette. Get my flat top brush that you saw earlier. This side I'm going to dip into the blue Curacao and the black currant again. And I'm going to get right tight up under the bottom lashes and smudge that along. And because at the moment I'm not able to wear um, eyeliner because my, one of my fibro symptoms is that my eyes stream a lot. Add to that hay fever and eyeliner does not stay. But what I do is I make sure that whatever part of colour I'm putting through the crease, I match under my eye. And then just flick it out ever so slightly up the outside there. So you've got just a barely imperceptible darker stripe just right on the outside. And that still gives the same illusion that a winged liner would. Hopefully you can see the difference between the two eyes. Underlining the eye has made it look bigger 
and continuing that colour out, it looks like it's drawing the eye out into a cat shape. So if you're struggling yourself with winged liner, it could be a way around it. Right, got my uh, BH Weekend Festival palette again, and I'm dipping into a mixture of Wicked and Trance, like I did before. Easy, easy, Wicked. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, lovely, lovely. I'm going to get demonetised now. <laughs> Not that I'm monetised in the first place, but you know what I mean. Probably get a copyright claim or something. Although how me mullering a song for a couple of seconds counts as copyright, I'm sure I don't know. And again, just carry that colour up the outside a bit. There you go, see? Now both eyes look nice and wide and open and pulled out to the side. Now, this is one of my favourite little brushes. It came with the um, Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. And it's flat on top, but it's a bit chunkier, so it's great for getting under your bottom lashes. So on the matte side, I'm going to go in to... Um, I think Lemon Lime from Slush, mixed with Cucumber Lime from Slush. I'm just going to buff that along the lower lash line just to soften that colour a little bit and to mimic the greens that we've got going on up there and then clean the brush off and I'm grabbing Zulu again and for the shimmer side I'm going to go into the shimmery green that I used and mix it with the shimmery blue that I've got in here and just pull that under the lower lash line. I think I might grab more of that green. That blue's overtaking the green a little bit. Come on green, bring it back in. There we go. And that's the door, hold on. All right. I am back. Why is it the door always goes when I'm filming, huh? It's always the way. No matter what time of day I film, I always get interrupted. Right, I'm going into my Makeup Addiction Cosmetics Holy Glow Fantasy Highlighter Palette. Which, I'll be honest, a little bit dark for my skin tone. But great for inner corner and under the brow bone, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to grab some of the green. This is a really cheap lip brush that I bought off of eBay yonks and yonks and yonks ago. And I'm just going to run some of the green up under my blue brow, because why not? Not as noticeable this side, obviously, because it's an all shimmer side, but... Should I have done a matte highlight this side, maybe? No. And then I'm going to get... Oh, the green one was... My lord. And the purple one is Fairy Jewel. Fairy jewel sounds like the sort of thing a fairy father say. Don't you take my fairy jewel away. I know what you young men are like. And I'm just going to carry that along. Just under the tear duct. And just blend it into that bit there. Well, this is most certainly a beautifully bright look. And even using just three colours of the rainbow, I think you can agree. You could wear this to pride, couldn't you? I'd say it's bright enough. 
Right, I'm just going to grab my uh, Nikki Tutorials Ofra Space Baby Highlight, which is the one with the blue shift. I hold it like that so you can actually see it in the mirror. Maybe you can see the blue shift. There, there you go. Look, you can see the blue shift if you look there. And I'm just going to use this just to go over that purple. Lighten it up just a little bit. Lighten and brighten it on the inner corner there. And then I'll use this highlight for the rest of my face as well. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time, hopefully, while I um, put a highlighter on the rest of my face, choose a lipstick and uh, do something with my hair. And I'll be back. Oh, and mascara. And uh, there we go. It's gone nuts again, but then when doesn't it really? Right, the mascara I chose today was the Essence Maximum Definition Volume Mascara with a flexible brush, which I quite liked because I didn't want my lashes to be. If I'd used my Glam and Doll, they'd have been so thick and and luxurious. That you would have lost some of the eye look and I really wanted the colours from the eye look to come through. And the Lippy is a Colourpop's Luxe Lippy in the shade Getty. It's a bullet lipstick. But I think it's the perfect bluey green shade to complement. What do you think? Hmm? And as I said, I used that Nikki Tutorials Ofra White Blue Highlight everywhere else. So... I really, really hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you think I've done my section of the rainbow proud. Um, which side do you prefer? Do you prefer the matte side? Or do you prefer the shimmer side? Let me know in the comments below which side you prefer. Right. Please, 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 please double check you are still subscribed because, you know, YouTube's still unsubscribing people. Um, I've got lots of other films that you could watch. However, before you watch any more of mine, please, please, please go and watch the videos from my fellow bitches, Anya and Nona. Because you can bet your life, those girls will have absolutely smashed it. They do awesome looks. Nona's just getting into colour, but she's being extremely adventurous. And let's face it, I love that. I love encouraging people to use colour. And she's so good at it as well. For someone who's not used to using bright colours, she does so well. She really does. And Anya, well, I don't think I've seen Anya do a neutral look yet, which is awesome, and possibly why we get on so well. However, a lot of her looks are a lot more editorial, or, um, if you've seen my tutorial that I did with the Wet n Wild Bed of Roses palette, where I had very stark lines, with no blending between the colours, she does that a lot with hers, and it's so impactful, I mean, it's just... Honestly, both those women take my breath away with the looks that they do. And they're actually quite nice people too. Unlike some people in the beauty community, I will name no names, who can be sweet as pie on camera and then complete and utter cows on Twitter to their followers. Um, they're being quite bitchy in, um, and not in a good way, in comments sections, you know, being very dismissive of comments that people put on. So, these girls, I can promise you, are not like that. So if you're one of my 4F babies and you love the happy, warm, comforting, friendly family that we have here, you're going to love both those girls because their channels are exactly the same. So please go show them some of the love 
uh, that you've shown me the past well, year and a bit really I've been going just over a year now and if you have arrived here from either Anya or Nona's channel hello welcome I'm the slightly nutty British bird who's half Welsh half Yorkshire so I very often pronounce words differently from day to day depending on whether I'm feeling more Welsh or whether I'm feeling more Yorkshire so sometimes you get favourite sometimes you get favourite who knows um, and I could I could waffle for Great Britain and I'm not talking about those gorgeous things that, that Americans have for breakfast with bacon and maple syrup and now I'm hungry all right then this is my section of the rainbow I really hope you enjoyed watching it so all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time bye for now